we've been talking about oscillations and in particular about this idea of a limit cycle attractor, which is an oscillation that is also an attractor and attracts nearby orbits and thereby represents a stable oscillation. I want to look at an important example of that in ecology. In order to do that, we have to go back to week one to the shark tuna model. And uh, shark tuna was a terminology that's idiosyncratic to this class. Uh, it's really officially called a predator prey model. And in this discussion and in the literature and in, if you read up on this model, you're going to see a different terminology. And so unfortunately, we're going to have to switch terminology from sharks and tuna to N equals the prey population and P equals the predator population. So in this new terminology, the shark tuna equations become N prime, which is the prey population, is equal to N minus NP, where this is the growth rate of the tuna, and this is the shark meets tuna term. And you recall P prime, which is the shark equation, is equal to plus NP minus P. So this was the shark tuna equation. Of course, the fancy name is the lotka volterra model. And when we simulated this, we saw that it had a funny property. And that funny property is that it was not a limit cycle attractor, we can now say, knowing that terminology. There was an equilibrium point here, but the equilibrium point was not stable and it was not unstable. It was what is called a neutral equilibrium point and the oscillations around the neutral equilibrium point depended entirely on your choice of initial conditions. If you choose this initial condition, you get this big oscillation. If you choose this oscill initial condition, you get a smaller oscillation. If you choose this initial condition, you get a still smaller one. In other words, the system remembers its initial condition forever. And as we said, this is not something you want in a biological model. If this is your body temperature and you have a fever one day so that your temperature goes up to there, if this were the correct model, you would then stay in that high temperature oscillation for the rest of your life. So we don't want that. This is another example of an oscillation which is not stable under small perturbations. So we have to think about how to improve the model and hope that we don't still get this unfortunate behavior of a center point and neutrally stable oscillations everywhere around it. So now we need to examine this model very carefully, the old shark tuna or Latka Volterra model carefully. And it's an interesting example because I think this is the first time we have seen 
correction, we've seen the evolution of a model that starts with a very simple model and then we realize, well, it does not incorporate this effect and we need to incorporate that effect and we make a more advanced model. And this happens all the time and models are under constant challenge and revision. And this is a very interesting example of it. So the first problem with this model is contained in the n prime equation because we have to ask the question, what happens if predator equals zero, p equals zero? Well, if p equals zero, that term drops out. We get n prime equals n. n prime equals n, as you know, is the differential equation for infinite exponential growth. And it predicts that if there are no predators, the prey will grow to infinity. And that is not true. So we need to have a saturating term that says that the prey cannot grow infinitely when the predator is zero. In other words, instead of n, we need a function f of n which is going to saturate and not do like n and just go up to infinity. So what's a nice saturating function there? Well, let's have this be logistic growth. n is now going to grow logistically, which means it's going to grow to a carrying capacity, and we're going to replace the n term with logistic growth of the form R1n times 1 minus n over k. And you are, of course, familiar with this logistic equation. k is the carrying capacity, and it predicts saturation at the carrying capacity. So that's our first correction, is instead of n, we're going to have this more complicated expression. Then the second objection is to the NP term. Because what does the NP term say? It says the bigger the prey mass, the bigger N is, the more the predators can eat. In other words, the predators can eat all the prey there is. If there's 100 billion, if there's 10 to the 20th prey, the predators can eat them. But that isn't realistic either. The, the predator population becomes sated or saturated at a certain prey value. The predator population becomes saturated at a certain prey value. They can't eat infinitely many prey. And so this also has to be a saturating function. And the saturating function we're going to take the form w n over d plus n. And what does that do? Well, you know that that's a saturating function in n. It goes to w as n goes to infinity. And the little d parameter there modulates the expansion and contraction of this function if, uh, if d is very small then you get a very rapid saturation and if d is large you get a more gentle saturation. So now this f of n term is going to go in for n there times p and we're going to get the first term of our new differential equation, which is n prime equals r1n times 
times 1 minus n over k minus p times wn over d plus n. And this is our first term in our new differential equation. So there is our amended n prime equation. Logistic growth in the prey and saturating consumption by the predator. Two biologically more realistic assumptions. Now let's look at the predator differential equation. And there again, that was making the assumption that the predator can eat infinitely much prey, and that isn't true. And so we're going to take a different approach to modeling the predator dynamics. We're going to assume that the predator also has a carrying capacity, but that the carrying capacity is set by the number of prey. So let's see how that works. Let's let j equal the number of prey needed for one predator. So j is a measure of the size of the prey relative to the predator. If j is very small, it means that one prey is a big meal. But if j is very large, you need many prey to support one predator. So if that's j, then it follows that j times p is the number of prey necessary to support p predators, which is what we have. And jp is therefore the amount of resource that we need to support the current predator population. Now, let's look at the fraction jp over n, which is the actual number of prey. If jp is less than n, then there's more predators than we need to support the current population. There's more, excuse me, there's more prey than is necessary to support the current population, and the population can grow. If JP is greater than N, we are oversupplied with predators, and they are going to have to shrink. So JP over N is the fraction of resources that are currently being used. But if that's true, then 1 minus jp over n is the fraction that is being unused. In other words, the fraction that is available to support further growth in the prey population. So our new predator equation is going to be a growth rate times the number of predators times this limiting carrying capacity set by the number of prey. And this is our new predator differential equation. So these two equations, with these three realistic, more biologically realistic terms, are called the Holling-Tanner model. And now let's ask what dynamics follow from the Holling-Tanner model. And it's very interesting because when you simulate the Holling-Tanner model, what you will see is 
that there is an oscillation in N and P, and that oscillation has the property that if you start inside, you zoom out, and if you start outside, you zoom in. In other words, the Holling Tanner model has a stable limit cycle attractor, unlike the Latka Volterra equations, which did not. And let me show you here the actual simulation of the Holling Tanner model. And you see that for initial conditions inside the loop, the oscillations expand and go out to the loop. And that for a set of initial conditions outside the loop, the amplitudes contract until it is once again going around the loop. In other words, this has a true limit cycle attractor. 